US and China has to look at India's new development. India may soon be flying the regional routes on the board a made in India aircraft. The Director General of Civil Aviation has allowed the Hindustan Aeronautical Limited or the HAL manufactured Donier 228 to be used for the civilian flights. The 19-seater aircraft has still now been used by the Defence Force of India and is the first plane to be made in country for the commercial flights. The DGCA has been given the typical or the type of certifications to this aircraft and also given the certificate of the airworthiness to HAL's Donia 228. Now HAL can sell this plane to airlines in India and it can be used by them for the regional flights under the government's new scheme which can give some special incentives maybe for other operators using this plane apart from the airlines in India, said some officials. Hall may be also look to sell at these planes for civil uses in the neighboring countries such as Nepal and Sri Lanka. The Hall describes its 19-seater Donia 228 as a highly versatile multi-purpose light transport aircraft. It has been developed specially to meet the manifold requirements of the utility and the computer transport, third-level services and the air taxi operations. Coast Guard duties and maritime surveillance. The non-pressurized planes has the maximum cruise speed of 428 kmp and a range of 700 km. It is capable of night flying. HAL successfully carried out test flights of this plane at the Kanpur airport this month after which DGCA gave the required nod for it to be used in the civil side of India. HAL has a transport aircraft division in Kanpur since 1960. It has a core competence in the manufacturing, maintenance, modification and upgrade of the light transport aircraft and the trainer aircraft for the both domestic and the international markets. The division also carries out the maintenance repair and the overhaul of the aircraft. The division has also commenced manufacturing of the civil variant of the Donia 228 aircraft. The HAL website says, while the DGCA has now allowed Donia 228 to be used for the commercial flights, HAL has said it can also be used for the pollution prevention and executive transport. So what do you think of India's new Made in India aircraft for using commercial flights for Indian passengers? Will it be boosted by the Indian government or it will give an international competence with the US and the China, typically? Ethiopia is a diverse country. Its population reflects 98 nationalities who speak 93 languages. Geographically, the country spans more than 1 million square kilometers. In the wet highland areas, farmers rely on rain-fed irrigation, while in the hot arid lowlands, pastoralists move with their herds to find suitable grazing. The current population of nearly 100 million people, 80% of whom live in rural areas, is estimated to reach 150 million people by 2035. Ethiopia also hosts more than 800,000 refugees and is the second largest host of refugees in Africa after Uganda. Over the past decade, Ethiopia has achieved significant progress in economic, social and human development. The poverty rate has declined from 55% in the year 2000 to 34% in 2011. Real GDP growth has averaged 10.5% per year between 2003 and 2015, and life expectancy rose from 52 years to 65 years. Ethiopia has achieved a number of the Millennium Development Goals. Primary school enrollment has quadrupled. The rate of child mortality has been halved and access to clean water has more than doubled. While Ethiopia has reached impressive milestones, significant challenges remain. The Country Partnership Framework, or CPF, will support Ethiopia's ambitious development goals, as articulated in its Second Growth and Transformation Plan, or GTP2. Most notably, Ethiopia seeks to become a lower middle-income country by 2025. This country partnership framework reflects extensive consultations with a broad range of stakeholders. 
The timing of the CPF is ideal as it coincides with round 18 of the International Development Association's punishment. Ethiopia's share of IDA 18, which will be approximately 4 to 4.6 billion US dollars, will help to address the challenges of poverty, inequality, including gender equality, human development, jobs, climate resilience, and private sector led growth. By working together with development partners, the World Bank Group will leverage these resources to help Ethiopia achieve its ambitious development objectives. Given the important role of the private sector, the CPF will further innovate and apply the principles of the cascade approach. This is a CPF for maximum impact. Some of the highly ambitious targets for this CPF include the following. The number of people with access to electricity will double, reaching 50%. The number of people with access to improved water sources will rise by 25%, and those with access to basic sanitation will increase by 43%. Up to 14 million people will be protected from food insecurity. The rate of contraceptive use by rural women will increase by more than 40%. The prevalence of stunting in children aged 0 to 23 months will decrease by 36%. Learning outcomes for girls in grade 4 in English and in mathematics will improve by at least 25%. Agricultural productivity for female-headed households will increase by 23%. And travel time on upgraded roads will be reduced by 56%, which will improve market access for farmers. Already in the first three years of the Women's Entrepreneur Development Project, more than 6,000 female entrepreneurs received loans to launch new businesses. The challenges are great, our targets are ambitious, and the focus is on delivering quality services that will have a significant impact on all of the people of Ethiopia. Dongying, a coastal city in Shandong province, is home to China's second largest oil field. The Yellow River flows through nine provinces in China and empties into the Bohai Sea here. It deposits large amounts of sand and silt to create new land. But Dongying also has large areas of saline soil along its coast due to flooding and inundation by tides and waves. Nearly 40% of its land has salt content above 0.5%. Most trees do not grow well in saline soil. Planting trees in such areas is a major challenge worldwide. In 2011, with support from the World Bank financed Shandong Ecological Afforestation Project, a large-scale tree planting program was launched in Dongying with focus on the saline coastal areas. A variety of engineering measures was adopted to reduce soil salinity to below 0.3%, a level at which trees can survive. Project staff worked with experts from forest research institutes and companies and introduced and bred nearly 200 salt-tolerant species, including 60 species suitable for growing in soil with more than 0.3% salt content. Species diversification also led to a booming seedling industry. New afforestation models of mixed species replaced the past practice of single species planting. Mixed forests not only reduced the risk of pest outbreak and improved the landscape, they also increased biodiversity and stability of the ecosystem. Local communities have been fully involved in this project. Community consultations were held in each of the villages in the project area. Farmers learned of opportunities and benefits and offered their preferences in terms of species to be planted and operational arrangements. Within six years, from 2011 to 2016, trees and shrubs were planted on 13,800 hectares of saline land. Forest cover was increased by 1.7%. The project approach and good practices 
were extended to all afforestation programs in Dongying. Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up, unfollow us on social networks and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching, this is WC Daily. Think big, think different. Bye.